Tay, what's up, man? I'm doing pretty good, Eddie. Feeling good, man. How you tired. doing? Had a fun last night. Last night went to Artscape. And we did some fun things. Yeah. We ended up doing pull-ups. Pull having ups. A, a, the whole community doing pull-ups, including hey. homeless guys and one handicapped guy. But anyway, that's one of the things we do here in Baltimore. Is just have what they call the bar, the, the bar guys. Yes, the yes. bar guys. Yes. We had one. women out there doing it. It was it was fun, man. Gotta have one. That's cool, man. That's cool. So yeah, man. You know, I wanted to sit down and talk with you a little bit about your business, man. Ram oh, in the cool. bush. Yeah. If you guys don't know, this is the owner of Ram in the Bush. Mm -hmm. Um, a moving in. Why don't we go ahead and tell it how, how it go? Well, I'm honestly with Ram in the Bush. I do uh, moving and hauling for uh, the whole DMV. I started off in Baltimore, um, and slowly but surely, uh, I started promoting myself a little bit more, and I started reaching outside of Baltimore. It started with DC. Then um, it was Virginia, then it was Philadelphia, then it was Ocean City. And then finally I got somebody to um, ask me to move them to New York. Mm. And um, then I was like, okay, well, at that point, I'm just going to keep promoting myself on Instagram yeah. and get my followers up and stuff like that. And then I also do debris removal. So all you house flippers out there that's looking to flip houses, I definitely do that. Um, and we're going to have his phone number right here. It's yeah, going to be right here, Ram in the Bush. You're right going to see it right there. So yes. make sure you call Ram in the Bush. If you need a push, call Ram, Ram in the Ram Bush. Ram in the Bush. Yes. <laughs> and I love the fact city. that you have a slogan. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's something that really catches people. Just call it. That's a part of branding, you mm -hmm. know. So, you know, just everything that you just said. Wait, were you finished? Because I feel like I Yeah, finished. that's okay. all good. Everything that you just said, man, it, it just... So many questions already, but I, I want to start from the beginning. You know, let's start up. Talk about your journey. Let's let's talk about your story. What made you start your business? What mm. what made you get into um, being an entrepreneur, being a mm. business person? Like, walk us through that. Let's see. Well, without saying too many names, I was working at a certain place, uh, and I realized I was giving a hundred percent, which I normally do. I give a hundred percent, and. Sometimes when you're on a job and you give 100% and the other people are slacking, it makes you, it brings down your grade. You get what I'm saying? It brings down your grade. So uh, I had already been doing some work with my uncle with the truck, and the truck is a Dodge Ram. I myself am a Ram. I'm an Aries. I like helping people out. So my uncle was showing me how to hustle when I was a little bit younger, and um once I got fired from this job, I was like, you know what? Why don't I try to do this full time? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm already a musician and all of that. But why don't I try to actually move people full time? Yeah. So once I was fired, I didn't really look back. I think that was four or five years ago. And then now I've been doing this and music. And then it's been this and I've been loving it. And so Ram the Bush, um, it, for those who don't know, it's like a biblical thing. I'm basically in the Bible. The, here's a short version. In the Bible, um... A guy was asked to sacrifice his son. Um, at the last minute when uh, he was obedient to his God to sacrifice his son, uh, God said, no, I will not have you sacrifice your son. I see how obedient you are. Um, I will provide a ram in the bush. Mm. At the last minute, the ram in the bush was taken, and that that uh, animal was sacrificed um, instead of his son. Yeah. So for me, a lot of people end up calling me at the last minute. Ah. Wow. <laughs> so I actually come in as a ram, driving a Dodge Ram, and I help people out and save them. So yeah. that's in a in a nutshell. That's how I started, and that's why I call myself what I do. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, I, I I've known um, Tehran. Golly. How much? What? Five years? I think maybe it's longer than that. Eight? I think it's, maybe. Probably closer to ten, but actually, yeah. yeah let's say, let's right. say eight to ten. Because I've been in, I've been doing real estate for t for close to ten years, mm -hmm. and you're right. I probably have, I feel like in the beginning of my journey, I didn't know you. Yeah, but that's because you was you was setting your foundation. So yeah, I yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody mad at that. That's cool. So I think it was like maybe nine, eight to nine years, maybe. Okay. But I've known this long. guy for a very long time. Um, I know about the biblical the biblical story, but I didn't know about the, the ram. Um, that he actually drove a, a Dodge Ram. That's something that we had in common. We both had a Dodge Ram mm, that's around, definitely, that, that's around true. that time. And that's the true. Aries, I didn't put those two and two together, but it's mm. just it makes so much sense. You know, how how do you think that helps you as a business owner with the with the correlation to to biblical? Yeah, well, it it helps me. Um, you know, I'm I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. um, so it helps me when. I'm dealing with other Christians. I'll say, well, hey, look, just so you know, um, because sometimes, you know, you show up, I'm shy. I, I can look shy, I guess, because I'm big and black. 
Mm. And uh, people, <laughs> I love it though. I love being big and black, um, <laughs> black power. But like a lot of people don't trust you yeah. when you first, but when you tell them like, oh, I'm Christian based, um, this means that, a lot of people mm -hmm. automatically connect to you. Mm -hmm. So for me, <clears throat> myself being an Aries and all of that, I actually live and I feel like it's my purpose to help people. So of course I make money off of it, but you know, yeah, it does help me. Yeah. It definitely helps me. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing that I always tell a lot of my students, you know, I have, I have a very diverse group of students. I have um, people from uh, Honduras. Honduras mm. is a is a Hispanic area. Most of them are dark skinned people. Okay. Um, women. Um, and and a lot of times we we find ourselves harping on the idea. Hey, we're mm. black. Hey, I'm mm. a woman. Hey, mm. this, that, and the third. Mm. Um, and when I first got started in real estate, you know, I'm still kind of in that same position. I'm mm. very young, mm. and I'm a, and I'm a black man. And mm. when I first started, I was I thought that would be a hindrance. Mm. I found that that would actually help me a lot, you know, because mm. I'm young. People wanted to help me um, a lot, and a lot of times, what we think is our weaknesses, a lot of times, mm. is our strengths, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I just wanted to point that out. Um, so yeah, let's let's go further into the story, man. So you you got started um, doing hauling because of the biblical the biblical mm -hmm. verse because you have a ram in the bush um, and because you got tired of your job like mm -hmm. what what how how do you correlate I'm trying to f see how I can best ask this question how do you correlate your job compared to your business now like are there things that you learn from it or, or is it mm -hmm. is it is it something that you think that hey it, it doesn't even matter like oh well what I would say is um um, I'm just going to say as a business owner, first of all, um, learn to take yourself seriously. Mm. I think when I first started, I didn't take myself seriously enough. I didn't look at it as, hey, this could become a business. I looked at it as, well, this is just a side hustle. Yeah. But, like, um, I will say the difference between, you know, actually owning your own business and setting your own hours and getting paid your own money is nobody, you do it on your own terms. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I can be, well, not that I would be broke, but what I can say is I can go from zero to a lot of money whenever I feel like it, just yeah. by promoting myself. And I don't have to wait every two weeks for a check to come in. It could be, and it comes in right and handy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of the times I would need some money, and then somebody called me up from a job I did two, three years ago. Yeah. And so what I will say is the freedom is a little bit better. I have flexibility, and I'm not actually super tired when I come home. And if I am, so what? I go to sleep. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what? I go to sleep, then I wake up in the morning, and then if I choose to do three or four more jobs that, that, that day or that week, then that's what I do. Yeah. And there's nobody that I have to answer to. I mean, I have clients, but I have the power in the situation. I yeah. think that's the best thing about owning your own business. You have the power in the situation. You empower yourself to, to make as much money as you want. There's no mm -hmm. ceiling on There's how much no ceiling. you don't have to, to say, no, you can't work this with this hours. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say, hey, I want to go on vacation. No, I can't. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. go. Yeah, I don't have to yeah. ask nobody. Bye. Empower yourself. Yeah, I don't have to ask nobody for bathroom breaks. Yeah. Go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but anyway. Now, you know, that, yeah. that, that brings me to my next question. Um, when, you're, when you're working at a job, you know, Oftentimes, you know, and I've done this, we've seen people have done this, you've definitely seen people that have done this because mm -hmm. you're putting in 100% while everyone else mm -hmm. is just riding your coattail and and, and, um, and not doing the same amount of work that you're doing, which mm. is annoying. Annoying. So, um, how, 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 how much do you have to, like, manage yourself? You know, mm. like, because, okay, you have the freedom to do whatever you want. You can go on vacation whenever mm. you want, but if you don't work, mm. you don't really get paid, right? That's so, true. Um, what, what, what do you do to, you know, to make sure that you stay disciplined, that you, you know, mm. like, what, what, are, what are some things that you would mm -hmm. give our, you know, our audience on how? Let's see. For, I actually have very small disciplines that I turn into large disciplines, like, uh, this may seem small to you. Whenever I go out to a restaurant that has rice or whatever, I, I, I make sure I get chopsticks. And it may seem small because it's just chopsticks, but for me, it that little thing builds up the discipline and patience to just, like, get through anything. If you can pick up four grains of rice with mm -hmm. some chopsticks 
and continuously train yourself to do that, just something small like that can transfer to something big. And what I transfer that to is, okay, well, if I had the patience to do this, I should have the patience every day with myself to promote, put a video out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or whatever, always have my business in the conversation when I'm talking to anybody. It doesn't because I used to think that talk about myself was like boasting. Yeah. But I yeah. read somewhere or saw a video somewhere that said, you know, millionaires, billionaires don't worry about talking about themselves as boasting. They understand that it's promotion. Promotion. So yeah. it doesn't matter who you are. Like I got in the lift yesterday and they say, Hey, you know somebody needs to move just that quick. I got mm. two I got two um clients. She said, Yeah, I need to move and my mother and I'm like, well, Two or three or four or five years ago, I wouldn't even have been doing that. Yeah, so modesty. I try to, yes, modesty. We're, we're told to be so yes. modest. Don't be modest because, like, all the people that saying to you, "Won't you get a real job?" They don't understand that it's like I said, it's the freedom. So that's, uh, hold on, let me get back to the okay. So the discipline. <laughs> so the discipline. I realize that because I work for myself, I have to work twice, if not five times, harder than anybody else mm-hmm. because I have to push myself. You get what I'm saying? You know, 50 times gravity, whatever. So, like, in the morning when I wake up, I make sure that I have a routine. I actually learned from this guy. This guy actually <laughs> gave me a couple routines. I schedule a lot of stuff in my calendar. I don't bluff. If you call me and it has something to do with uh, my business, I handle it right then and there. There's no waiting. So, I make sure in my free time, it's free time, but I'm doing something important. Like, yeah. if I'm hanging out with my girlfriend, love my girlfriend, but... When we first hey, started Nandy. hanging out, hey, Nandi, what's up? <laughs> when we first started hanging out, I wasn't necessarily doing, I was losing time yeah. when, um, you know, hanging out with them is very important, but I can do two things at the same time. So with her now, while I'm with her now, it might be a little annoying, but while I'm with her, I'm still either writing down something I need to do tomorrow, scheduling events, yeah. people are calling me, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm handling their business right then and there, or I'm posting a video that's going to lead to more revenue. Mm-hmm. So I try to keep my discipline like that. I try to remember that if I don't push myself, then nobody else will. And, you know, when you need to push, yeah. you call around and push. Bus. So if I don't push myself, you know what I'm saying, who's going to call me to push? So that's, that's I wonder I if that at. clap messed up some, some volumes. It is okay because so we edit. Up. We're editing. <laughs> We're going to edit. The so mess. work-life balance, is it real? Uh, we had this conversation one time. Ah. I don't, uh, <laughs> work-life balance. We want, when you, as a business owner, your work is your life. Mm. That's that's the best way I can say it. Yeah. I make sure, just like, like I said, I learned a lot from you. I make sure that just as hard as I work, that's as hard as I party, that's as hard as I do anything else. But in between time and meantime, I'm checking on that Instagram. I'm checking on that Facebook. Yeah. I'm seeing what client have I not talked to yet because... You know, I can't, I don't have it. I have a nine to five, but I don't have a nine to five. I yeah. have a whenever. So there is no balance there. You have to just do it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you get know. you. Yeah. I read in a book somewhere that says that, you know, the whole work life balance was something that was kind of made up that brought into society. Um, multitasking is, is not even something that humans can do. That, mm. that definition, that phrase came from computers mm-hmm. because computers are able to do two things at the same time. And that's literally where the word multitasking mm. comes from. So it's not even meant for human beings. Mm. Human beings can't even multitask. You can't text and drive. If you text mm. and drive, it's the equivalent of being drunk that's and true. driving. That's true. Um, so um, the one thing, I think I read this in the one thing, Gary Keller. Mm. So yeah, just focus on one thing, you know, one thing at a time. Yeah, man. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to ask a little bit what I love about your business, what I love um, about the things that you do is that you hire people. You know, mm-hmm. you employ the uh, people in the community, not just people in the community, but your family. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, it's practically a family. But would you consider Ram and the Bush to be a family business? Definitely. So, you know. Um, family first. Family first. Family first. Definitely. Yes. So, you know, I love it. Um, I wanted to ask a little bit about, you know, because right now. I'm in the middle of purchasing a businesses, gotcha. um, purchasing yeah. businesses. One thing that I see that a lot of business owners, majority of them don't do, mm-hmm. um, which makes investors not want to purchase your business, is they don't have employees. They're working on, mm. them, they're working themselves, mm. you know. So because they're working themselves, you can't really sell yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to hire people. You have to create systems, you know. 
walk us down that journey and and the difficulties the challenges mm -hmm. like things that you that you do to to really manage your people mm -hmm. um and and how does that work especially when it deals with family members because a lot of books tell us not to work with family <laughs> you know which i disagree oh, with man. i disagree but with too. you know um mm -hmm. just just walk us down that walk us down and let me know what your thoughts are on okay that. well first of all i have to give a quick shout out to um Teddy the tax man uh, he just wrote a book called step away from the porcelain but that's um he handles retirements and all of that that's my uncle um he's on the fox news every monday oh, wow. um quick shout out but what i would say is not only is, is he my uncle but he's also my mentor mm. Him oh, yeah, you talk about him often. Yes. I need to meet this guy. Why haven't you I met him? You would love him. First of all, we <laughs> act similar. So it's like me and uh, however old he is, yeah, Tay. Yeah, yeah. It's wonderful. We all act the same, all of that. I love it. Him and my father have been in business for years now. Hmm. Like, they're partners when okay. it comes to that. I mean, like, he owns the business, but my father, you know. So one thing he would say, and he even wrote it in his book, is um, hire your family members. Yeah. And it seems like... No, it's taboo to do, don't do it because, well, oh, we're going to have bad blood. No, one thing he says is the best thing about hiring your family members and people you know is you know their tendencies already. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not that you would hire a thief or none of that type stuff, but if I know that you're a person that has a short temper and all of that, I know that because I've been knowing you for years. Yeah. If I know that you're going to uh, you know, act a certain way to you know, any proposition or whatever, if, if, if I know how you're going to act, I can hire you because I already know how you're going to act. Now, when you're hiring people off the streets, you have no idea who they are. Yeah. you got to go through a lengthy process just to figure out who they are. Mm -hmm. And then you know how people are. They sell themselves very high when you first meet them. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. on time for the first two weeks of, of the job, and then next thing you know, they start. And they could be serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> they could be any, you know, but at least with your family. I mean, hey, you already know he's a serial killer. So, But I'm just saying, don't hire the serial killers. <laughs> don't, don't hire serial killers. Oh, put some words right here to say that. But what I'm saying is hiring your family is the best thing you can do. I work with my brother Lamonte. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know his tendencies. Yeah. I, I, that's my been my brother of all my life. So it, it's able to I can I'm able to manage that better because I know how he's going to react to certain yeah. situations. So I can step in a situation and say, "Bro, listen, that's not what this guy meant. What he meant was this." Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. "Hey, bro, I know you strong will just like me. We are hard headed. Most alpha males are hard headed. We mm -hmm. don't want to listen." But, bro, I can approach him like, "Look, I hear what you're saying, bro, but try it this way." Yeah. And at the same time. I know I can trust him because because we are a family member, he wants to do the best job possible for me. Yeah. I can trust that he's going to show up to work even if I have to go get him. I know that he's going I can trust him to be him. Mm -hmm. He's real. So I mean people that say don't hire your family members, I mean what you afraid of? I remember hiring somebody I've known for twelve years. They hired somebody that I just met and I gotta get to know. So for me, you know, um, let's see, you said something else about long journey. You said hiring your family members. What else did you ask? Just me? managing people in general and, and how, do you, how do you do it? Um, okay, well, what I will say is, um, like, recently I just had a job where I, I got my nephews, nieces, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Managing people, um, like I said, well, first of all, it's, al it's already better if you know them. Because it's like a team, you know, whose strengths and whose weaknesses to play to. Mm -hmm. Because that's all you are as a captain. But managing people is easy if you play it like that. If you know that you can play to their weaknesses and strengths, it's easy. If you have no idea what their weaknesses and strengths are, it makes it a little harder. And then you have to always understand that even though we're friends and family, I don't want to seem like, you know, an overburned person, but I am the boss of this situation. And I have to call the plays, and I have to pay attention to knowledge that they don't know. Like, I'm on a job one time. I mean, I never break any pe anybody's things. But when I first started, I wasn't paying attention to the people who were working with me, and they would break people's things. And then I'm held responsible because I'm managing these people. So it's easy if you if you play it the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it kind of reminds me of when you have a car that has problems. Mm. And mm -hmm. then you say, I'm going to sell this car and I'm going to buy another used car. Mm. That possibly could have problems that you have no idea. That's true. That's you know? true. So I think that's a great point. You know, that's I think true. that's a, I've never thought about it like that. Um, and, you know, I definitely understand the weaknesses, the, the strengths, and, and knowing where, you know, where they are. So 
you're absolutely right. When when dealing with family members, you abs- you know what what you're dealing with. That's true. That makes that makes total sense. Any systems that you have in place to to um, make it run smoothly, like how 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 do you work on your business as opposed to in your business? How do I work on my business? Um, you talking about when it comes to employees, employees, systems, you know, um, branding, uh, just anything where you know you're not doing the day to days, but but you're working on making the business better mm. outside of the day to day. You know. Okay. What I do is um, one thing that really helps me is um, if I'm on any job and I come into, I run into an obstacle, I immediately write that down in my notepad Mm -hmm. so that way i can go i need to take a little drink real quick (laughs) i immediately write it down on my notepad that way i can go back and uh see what mistakes i made or and or figure out how i can approach the situation differently Mm. um gary v gary v gary v that's my man he cusses a lot i love it yeah he cusses a whole lot but his message is clear um i started taking myself seriously like when it came to the internet, once I realized that on your phone there are a billion phones out there, mm-hmm. and everybody's looking at their phone for probably about eight to nine hours out of a day while like driving, me, while driving, <laughs> which they shouldn't be. But hey, you know, right. <laughs> you know if you got the hold of you, cool. So I realized um, that I should start doing that more, um, and I also realized oh, I'm also a product of my environment. So my friends, such as uh, uh, Travis Case, yes, Mason um, Dixon, Mason Dixon yeah. um, Entertainment, Mason Diction, yeah, Mason Diction. Um, we apologize. Entertainment, for you know what I'm saying? They, they, oh, we gotta look up there too. Yes, that's um, that's uh, Travis Case, and that's um, Theo Edwards. Yeah, and they, I actually plan on having Mike his some mm-hmm. of his music on this, so hopefully we'll have we'll have that Mike. Oh, song. and Mike music Steven. featured Don Don, you know the, yes. the 3 a.m. project. Oh yes, yes. Mike even is tough. Is oh my God. the best in Baltimore if oh you ask God. me. But point, like, point blank. Lately I've been missing. <laughs> Sorry for the distance. <laughs> but but been on the what I would say is um, trying to save myself from myself. No more lying. I've been slipping. They are very good I got my addiction. I've yeah. been far from Christian. And, um, I hope God is listening. I watch them and I listen to my friends when they talk. And Trav would say, "Well, you know, I need to." Um, Put a video out Monday. I'm gonna put a video every Monday. And matter of fact, I'm gonna try to do video three videos a week. I watched him go from one video to three videos to now he got so many videos I can't even keep up with the tags. Yeah. And I said, you know, that's what's up because I read somewhere or saw something that um your clients need to see you seven times mm-hmm. before that they're they'll uh consider hiring. I talk about that all the time with yes. my students. And, and matter of fact, I'm hurt matter of fact <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a class, a real estate class with you know, with this guy. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it costs a certain amount of month, but it's worth it, so you need to go ahead and buy that. But he talks about that in his class. So, you know, that's I forgot who I got it from, but that's <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I thought you No, you know, like that's that's it's true. You know, it's mm-hmm. scientifically proven. You know, um, seven times people have to trust you over a period of time, and if they see you on a regular basis, consistency, that's when they start to, to trust you, and you're able to close. It's it's literally Gary V, jab jab right hook. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's setting them up, setting them up, bam. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> right, he boxes too. <laughs> yeah, cool. So yeah, yeah, man. Um, what's your why, bro? What's why do you why? do the things that you do? What 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 brings wakes you up in the morning to say, hey, this is my addiction. I want to I want to make money in, 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 in business. Um, I want to, you know, grow mm. my my, my, um, my hauling business. He's, he's doing real estate now. Mm. Why, bro? Why do the things that you're doing? Mm. Why not just work at a job? Have a regular <sighs> life. Why? Why? Because um, I'm not regular. Mm. I've never been regular. My teachers in middle school used to be like, man, if you would just work up to your potential. And I've been hearing it for most of my life. If you would just work up to your potential. If you would just work up to your potential. If you would just work up to your potential. And um, this 90-day challenge that I'm on is actually pushing me to work up to my potential. Every single time I doubt myself in you know, what I'm capable of doing, I always surpass and shock myself. Mm-hmm. And I realize, you know, it's nothing wrong with a nine to five if that's how you pay your bills. That's fine because being a business owner is extremely hard. Mm-hmm. You have to go through times where you don't have money in the beginning. Uh, you have to go through times where uh, you know there might be a recession. You have to go through times of people bluffing you and all of that. But I realize it's all worth it because 
I'd rather be putting 100% into me than putting 100% into somebody else. Because mm. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. Like, I'll get on a job that's so simple, like moving chairs. Mm -hmm. You're a facilitator. I'm moving chairs. And I'll be working circles, running circles around the people I'm working with. To the point where I'm sitting down and asking me why I'm sitting down. I'm sitting down because I've done your work and my work too. You know what I'm saying? You're on the phone talking to whoever you're talking to the whole time. I've, I've already finished the job because it's so simple. So, like, when you have that ambition, um, you have to go towards that. And my why is my mentors have shown me on paper that they, they've made easily a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And I say to myself, like, well, if they can do it, why can't I do it too? You know, my uncle used to say to me, if you're a man and man made it, if, if you're a man, and man is able to make these things, and you call yourself a man, and there is no reason why you cannot do what they aren't doing or what they are doing. Yeah. So yeah. I, my why is why not? <laughs> mm. For real, for Ooh. real. You know what I'm saying? My why is, is why not. I hope the words come up nicely. Like, why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even come up there. But, you know, so my, my why is, is why not? No people, no no people don't actually ask me these questions. That's great, man. So it's cool. So I was planning on ending it with why, mm -hmm. um, but you you asked, you said something, and now I have to ask you another thing. Okay. How important is it? Um, and and I do you know speaking engagements, and I talk about hiring people, managing people, asking for help, mm -hmm. being vulnerable, um, as as a as a um, business owner and. and since we're business owners, we're told we're supposed to be the experts. We're told mm -hmm. we're supposed to know everything. Alpha males don't like to listen. <laughs> what? How do? You, how important is it to have a mentor? How important is it to ask for help? Like, you know, or is that even a thing? Mm. Some well, um, it gets easier. It's 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 a very humbling experience when you think that you know everything, and then you walk in a room, and twenty people know. 20,000 things more than you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you are inferior to them, and it doesn't mean that they're any smarter than you. It just means they have experience in different fields or more experience in the same field that you have. So it's a humbling experience, and sometimes that humbling experience as a, as a strong male, you don't know how to take that um, because it makes you feel... It, is it, I don't want to say inferior, but it makes you feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And as a business owner, you have to realize that your business is your vulnerability. That's you saying to the word, this is my creation and this is what I do. And you have and to... And I'm sensitive. And I'm sensitive about my... Sensitive. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, uh, taking criticism and all of that type stuff is, is hard, but it's needed because you cannot grow. And if you're not growing, what, what, what? What I got? I went to the church. I uh, went to this this Beyond Conference, mm -hmm. um, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. And one of, the, one of the things that the pastor there said, uh, anybody know Blockbuster? I said, you know, of course everybody said, yeah, we know Blockbuster. I said, well, yeah, you know, Blockbuster was really good back in its time and all of that. I said, but you, have you ever heard of Netflix? Everybody lit up, like, cool, and that's because I'm watching that tonight. He said, well, one thing that Blockbuster did was they failed to innovate. They had the opportunity to innovate, and they did not take it because they thought that it would uh, take away from their business. Mm -hmm. Now... You don't even hear Blockbuster. It went out of they went out of business. They started selling their movies for about two dollars, five dollar boxes. I remember I used to go, but now um, Netflix has taken over. And if you do not innovate, see where your competitors are, and be willing to take other people's advice. I mean, successful people's advice. I'm not saying that you can't not take unsuccessful people's advice, but do take advice from people who have done it or are trying to do. But like, if you don't innovate, you will fail. Yeah. So that's what I would say is I, I try. It's a humbling experience, but you need that. It's so so pertinent to the existence of your business. Yeah, the first thing that comes to mind when you say that is the banks and cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, cryptocurrency is uh, is something that I think is revolutionary, and I think that a lot of banks are pushing against it out of mm -hmm. fear that they're going to mm -hmm. be out of business because that's technically why they even created cryptocurrency. Technically, mm -hmm. my thing is why don't the banks just create a cryptocurrency? Mm -hmm. Mm, right. You know? Right. So right. if you can't beat them, join them. Join them. And, and um, innovate. And, be and innovate. Than them. And be yeah. better. And, and, and be humble enough to say, hey, 
I need to grow. I need to innovate. I need to go with the times mm. and not be stuck in the past. So mm. I love everything that you're saying, man. Every time we sit down and talk, sometimes we get on the phone and we talk for hours. Mm -hmm. um, I grow with. I grow every time. You know, you learn something, you share it with me, and vice versa. We're literally on a race to a million, him and I, mm -hmm. and, and we're doing it in a way where He's we're winning. uplifting. He's a little bit. But but we're doing it in a way that's uplifting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one uplifting of, you know, it's yeah. it's it's competitive. We're yes. very competitive, very competitive. people. Yes. Um, and 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 it's a healthy competition. It's something that mm -hmm. we always push one another to do. Iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, as a, as I've grown, as I've matured, I'm learning to be way more vulnerable. I'm mm -hmm. learning to 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 trust people. Mm -hmm. Trust people. And that's, I think that's one of the big reasons why people do not hire. Mm. And if you don't hire, mm. if you're not willing to trust people, trust your family members, mm -hmm. trust, trust whoever you need to trust in order to make your business better. Mm. That's true. Um, that's and true. if you don't hire people, you don't create systems, you won't be able to sell your business and retire. Mm. That's true. That's true. A lot of people don't even think past go. Mm. You know, so... Uh, um, I, if I can leave anything um, with you guys from my perspective, interviewing Tay, you know, make sure that you hire people, you trust people, you create systems, and you have an exit plan. Mm -hmm. Begin with the end in mind. Even if you plan, because a lot of times people say, oh, I'm going to give this to my children, I'm going to mm -hmm. give this to my... You may, your, your, ch your child may not want your business. <laughs> yeah, it's going to hurt your feelings. Your child that's, that's may not truth. want your business. That's the truth, yeah. You know, um, so... Sometimes you have uh, people have generations of, of the same business of a farm, mm. and then they make so much money from it, and then they make so much money that they send their grandkids to medical school. Mm -hmm. That's true. They send them to to all these different schools, and that's what they want to do. They have they don't want anything to do with the farm. They don't want anything to do with the family business. And from that point, when it comes time for you to retire, you have to ask yourself, Do I have a succession plan? Mm. And if I don't. Can I sell this business? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, because I am the business, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, so I wanted to talk a lot about, you know, managing people, how you create that whole thing. You answered a lot, man. You know, um, it starts with managing yourself. I really appreciate you coming. How much you willing to sacrifice? How many times are you down to fall? Will you be patient and do it right? Are you afraid that it take too long? How much you really believe in you? Even if you up against the odds, your only way is to see it through. If you don't quit, then you never lost. On God, play this while you driving down the pavement. Play this to remind you, you the greatest. Are you play looking to retire? Are you looking to sell your business? My name is Eddie Colson. I'm an investor that buys businesses. A group of my partners and I have been buying businesses and looking and searching for the right business to purchase. Give me a call at 443-242-4132. Again, 443-242-4132. If you're looking to retire, I'm your buyer.